Welcome to Illuminations, a program of study designed to guide you through the basic tools one needs to become a better painter. We intend to shed light on the theories, tools, and techniques that provide this foundation. Many of the subjects we'll explore seem to confuse even experienced painters when they're trying to do everything at once. Every stroke applied to a painting must exhibit the knowledge of composition, color, value, edge, linear and aerial perspective. That's a tall order for a beginner, yet that's exactly what many try to do when they start painting. Actually, all these concepts are simple to understand when they're studied out of the context of trying to execute a painting. Join me for the entire Illumination series for a good basic introduction to the theory, tools, methods, and techniques every painter can use. Now the brush that I'm using for this is a rather small, about a size 2, 3, or 4 white bristle filbert brush. And I'm just rolling it in that um, transparent paint so that it will go on rather sparingly on the canvas. And because of the roll in the brush stroke, sometimes you'll lay off a little bit more paint sometimes a little less paint, sort of brownish in color. And if you look at uh, the 17th and 18th century du old Dutch master uh, landscape paintings, you'll find that this is the color range that they painted in. Uh, not that they didn't have some blues and, uh, and bright reds, but those were very expensive colors. So they made use of many of the optical mixes that glazing and scumbling can offer to you. I'm staying well away from the painting by holding my brush way back on the handle. Here, I've, and rather than putting on paint, I'm lifting it off simply by taking a, a clean, dry brush and carving through the wet paint. This is one of the beauties of transparent paint, that you can push it around and make someone believe that you've actually painted with a light value when all you've done is score through the wet paint and reveal that tonal wash surface underneath. You see that light area is the same color as the, the tonal wash that I had on the canvas originally. Just like each one of these fence posts are being lifted off the canvas rather than being painted in directly. Try this exercise with some of your paintings. I think you'll find that it offers you a, a lot of opportunities to make a little bit more artistic statements sometimes and not have such muddy colors. See how you can push the paint around. And with that, the underpainting is virtually complete. While you have the, the colors on your palette, that's the time to lay in the reflections in the sky that you see of the sky above. And notice that I've changed brushes and I've changed brush stroke. What I'm doing here is laying in with a flat, soft, sable type brush of uh, vertical strokes that are pulled straight down. When I want it to blend into some of the reflections of the other objects that I have already painted into the water, I'll take a stroke that pulls up into the previously painted area. I brushed mix that sky color a little bit darker because when you look at a reflection of a sky like this in the water where we're standing on the riverbank, what you're going to see is not the sky that you see behind that tree on the other side. You're going to see a reflection of a sky that's higher, the sky that's off the top of the canvas. And generally speaking, that sky is going to be darker in value than the sky you see in the painting. So you need to be aware that reflections of your sky and of your clouds need to be darker than those objects that are seen in your the painting. The brightest, most intense colors that are on the painting are those that are left from the original underpainting when we used only transparent colors. And that's probably the most important lesson that this program has to offer, is that the opaque colors made using white are quite a bit duller than those colors that were laid on transparently using no white. It's one of the reasons that the old master paintings appear to be more integrated in their color range. It's because they had so few colors to work with, they didn't have the range 
of colors with the the modern chemical pigments that we have available today. So they were inherently more uh, more within a color scheme simply because of this limited palette. If you discover by using this palette all of the beautiful colors and range of values that it has to offer, I think that your modern type painting will be greatly enhanced by what you learn from using some of the things that I'm showing you in this program today. Got some edges, some tiny little things. That area was important because it's right in the area where the little lady is walking across the bridge, which is going to be my center of interest. So I don't want to call attention to that with something that's an error. And finally, some of the other areas of the painting. Hope you can see how loosely they're painted and that if you are painting along with me, that your painting has the same look and feel as this one. Give yourself plenty of time to do it. I hope you've enjoyed today's demonstration, which shows the power of transparent paints, and that you'll try this limited palette in your own work to see how it can add richness and depth to paintings that you may have thought were a lost cause. Join me in future programs when we'll explore other methods and techniques that will give you more tools to use in your original compositions. Until then, try transparent oil colors and enjoy painting.